So we looked at position as well as location. Now let's take a look at variability. And variability is really how much does it range from that middle point. And the easiest one, of course, to do is nothing more than the range. The range, you take the highest value, in this case 715, and you subtract the lowest value of 525, and you get your uh, range of 190. Uh, pretty easy to do. That helps us just to get an idea of where data is, but I'll tell you one thing that's really important for everything we do and everything to really understand uh, how much variability you have. It is variance and standard deviation. So we're going to learn variance and standard deviation, and we're really going to start applying it in Chapter 6. And so hold tight. Just understand that what we're learning now will help us in future uh, chapters. But you'll look at the value for variance and not really understand why you did it or, or what it is. Same thing for standard deviation. So again, it's a measure of how far away from the mean you are. And so we're going to look at each value of x and compare it or subtract it from the sample or population mean and then square it and uh, divide in the end. And you'll see all of that here. Again, do not get afraid of what you see. Um, if you look at our sample variance, which is right here, it's showing you the sum of x minus x bar squared. So what does that mean? I'm going to show you here up on our easy example. And you can see I've got my value of 2. And then for that, I take x minus x bar. It gives me, I'll actually write it over here, x minus x bar, and that gives me that part of my equation. Well, then I need to square it. So if I take 2 minus 4.2, it gives me a negative 2.2. And then if I square that value, it gives me this right here. Remember, every time you square a negative value, it becomes positive. Because again, multiplying a negative times a negative gives you a positive value. So 2 minus 4.2 is the x minus x bar. Square that value gives you 4.84. And you do that five times because you have five in your sample. And then that would give you a total here. And so the sum that you have on your uh, calculation, if you look at that part, would then be 10.8 when you add up these values. Divide that by n minus 1, and you should have a variance of 2.7. And uh, again, what does that value really mean to you? Well, that's what we got to kind of figure out. Um, but variance, I want you to be able to understand how to calculate. So let's write the 5 right here. And if you can understand how to calculate variance, you then will easily be able to calculate standard deviation because it's nothing more than the variance, the square root of the variance. And if we were to look at, let's see here, our values here, you can see that these. I did the same thing in Excel to make my life a little bit easier. And you can see here's that where that 10.8 came from. That's the sum of all of these values. And then when I divided by 4, because 5 minus 1, it gave me 2.7. The standard deviation then is 1.643. Now, the easy way to do it is if I just did this formula right here, which is the vari variance for a sample from A2 to A6, and you can see that it gives me the same value. And then standard deviation is just stdev dot s, which you see here. And that's all that you have to do, then A2 to A6, and it gives you the same value. So this and this are the same, 
calculated different ways. So again, I want to make the point that doing this kind of math is not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is for you to understand how to uh, calculate it, preferably using Excel, and then with Excel, you can then use that information to understand the variability in your data. So again, here are the different uh, formulas. Another measurement of variation, um, more of a ratio, is just the coefficient of variation. And that's where you look at the standard deviation in comparison to the actual sample mean. So let's take a look at an example up here on the whiteboard. So let's say I have a standard deviation of 500 and one of 50. Well, the one that's 500, since it's larger, must mean there's more variation. But if you really look at it, think about the variation in terms of the sample mean and it varies by the standard deviation is 50 in this case, but the sample mean is only 100. So in this case, you have a coefficient of variation of 50 because it's 50 divided by 100 multiplied by 50, I'm sorry, by 100 gives you that 50, and that tells you that you have a, uh, a coefficient of variation that's at 50. Compare that to that one, and I'll let you guys do the math on that one. You'll see that this one would be a lot smaller. So in relation to the mean, you can see that this one is a lot smaller, which means less variability in terms, as it relates to the mean, than this one down here. So that's a coefficient of variation. So we've talked about range, we've talked about variance, we've talked about standard deviation, and then coefficient of variation. So looking at this in terms of your apartments, again, you can uh, go ahead and calculate it out for the um, sample size of 70. And I want you to do this, and you'll see that you'll get a variance of 2,996.16. Standard deviation then is just the square root of that value, which is 54.74. You then take the standard deviation, divide it by your sample mean, multiply it by 100, and that's where you get that 9.27%. So that is uh, three different types of variation. I want you to give that a try with the data set, and that data set is available to you uh, through D2L. Then I want you to go in and do these formulas. So get your data set. I've already got it from B2 down to B71, and put these in and see what you get. Hopefully you can get the same answers as what you saw in our uh, set here. And what you should see is 590.8, 575, 550 variance and the standard deviation and then also your coefficient of variation. So those are extremely important as we get going. Now we're going to start getting into probability in our next chapter. That really becomes important for chapters five and six because we're then going to look at mean and standard deviation as it relates to probability using all of those together to come up with real business decisions. So please use this uh, data or this chapter as a foundation for what we're going to use in future uh, chapters.